What is going on lads and welcome back to the channel. So the last episode that we did or the last video we did was just more about all the content that has come. I'm going to fix my hair real quick here now. All about the content. So look, we're always going to get, we have a game that is centered around Dream Team at the moment and we can go on and on and on and on and on about edit mode and about Master League. I mean, I'm one of Master League's biggest fans. I have been for my whole life playing Pez with my brothers and growing up and editing. I've been editing for 12 plus years. So to me, it is very, very hard not to have a Master League, not to have an edit mode, which is why, you know, going back and playing Pez 2021 with an option file and editing all that just to get the, the buds, because it is a hobby for a lot of guys as well. But we are in a Dream Team centric world at the moment with eFootball. That is where it is at the moment. So we are going to get all the packs. We are going to get new legends. We are going to get all these updates that are for specifically for Dream Team and for obviously, um, you know, bringing the money into a free to play game. But for me, the bread and butter of any game that I am going to play needs to be with gameplay first. That is it for me. That needs to be the main component of the game that I'm playing. You know, it's like if I'm playing Warzone, do I really care if I can run around in a Snoop Dogg or a Terminator skin? Not as much as when I press shoot, it shoots. When I line up a headshot and whap it, the headshot actually kills the, the, the enemy. You know what I mean? That I'm able to control my guns the way that I'm able to control my guns the last week, month, year. So that is kind of what's important to me. And for the gameplay of eFootball, I think V1.0 was really, really, really good. It was really solid. I probably would rate it maybe even an 8 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10. I enjoyed it, even with all the issues. V1.1.4, not so much. Me and it just did not get on, honestly. We just did not get on. It's like a, a curry cheese chip just does not get on with me. But for this, right... We are going to have a look at the gameplay. So I'm going to do a back-to-back -back video with this one. We've already covered the content. Check that out. We're going to do this one where we talk about the gameplay. And then we're actually going to play the game and see what we can look at and see what we can pick out from what we're looking at in here in the patch notes. So they've released very extensive notes on what they fixed, what they've adjusted. And there does seem to be a lot of changes. And more so it sounds like they actually have a good idea of where they want the gameplay to go. It might not be there yet. Hopefully it is, but it, we might not be there yet. But hopefully, you know, in October, December, when we have two more updates, we will get that eventually to a point where we have really good gameplay that's on par with V1.0 or even better. So gameplay fixes and adjustments, player movement and attack and overall enhancements on maneuverability of dribbling and player movement, decreased inertia, decreased inertia of players for in-movement stops and turns, including mid-dash, Fix the issue where performing shallow angle turns and movements may result in excessive acceleration and extensive turns. So just to cover the three of those, because they're kind of saying the same thing. This is meaning that they're going to have a, that players can stop on a dime, but have a realistic kind of, you know, movement pattern of like speed and acceleration. Because at the moment when they say the decreased inertia of players for in-movement stops and turns, offline players and hardcore players will want the players to on pitch to have as much weight as possible so that it looks as realistic as possible moving through the animations. But lads, when you have an online-centric game, and again, this is a controversial you know, point that nobody really likes talking about because you have to balance it with expectations of how the game should look, play, and handle animation-wise and in your controller when you have control of the players compared to it actually being not pick up and play fun, but it being actual fun that it's a video game. You know what I mean? Like if I want to go out and I want to be tired from playing a game, I'll just play a bit of five aside and, you know, be blowing out my arse after about 20 minutes and you have to go in goals. That is realistic where you're going to have inertia and you're going to have different players with different acceleration and stuff. But when you are playing a video game, you have to have the responsiveness there that your players are doing as you ask them. So if you get the ball and you control it with your left foot, and the inertia of the player and the natural movement of the player is to like separate the ball from the body, open up the body, and then kick it with your right foot after taking a touch with your left. In real life, you can do that. But in a video game, you are going to have to be able to do that on a regular, consistent basis. Like you're not going to have 90% pass completion if you go down and even play a five aside against, you know, under 10s because, you know, interceptions, bobbles and stuff like that you have to have it responsive and you have to have it that you're not fighting with your controller 
And that's a big kind of issue, I think, of balancing that. You know, I thought V1.1, again, had a good balance of that where I felt my fast players were fast, my so slow players need a little bit more um, concentration and control when I was controlling them and stuff like that. So that is music to my ears right there. Uh, as we see that so again they talk about fix the issue where players may move too far away from the ball implemented adjustments for easier ball retention when performing a shield i'm a little bit iffy on that one i think it should be should be fairly easy to get the ball off you know smaller players especially implemented adjustments so that players dribbling stats and stamina will now have a heavier influence on their fainting speed whereas players height will now have less influence okay so tall players with high dribbling stats will now be able, able to perform quicker and sharper feints on the other hand fainting speed will decrease when fatigued implemented adjustments so that performing feints in succession will result in a reduction of speed accuracy due to temporary fatigue and player stamina will be reduced again if somebody wants to spam they're up 2-1 they're being a bit of a you know what being a bit of a, a bio and they're trying to frustrate you by doing tricks and rainbow flicks just take away their stamina man that's all you have to do and it's a good idea and i think that will stop it very quickly you don't want a toxic online uh, experience you want to have a fun game even if you are losing and sometimes players won't want to play fun want to, to play for fun they'll want to play to be a dick so fix the issue where the time taken to kick a ball after performing a feint may be unnaturally fast fix the issue when feint commands may not trigger the correct feints during low speed dribbles that's a big issue for me big issue for me i would do the thing do you know where neymar he like runs over the ball fix the issue where kick feints may not be triggered fix the issue where the cursor may unintentionally be switched to another player when performing a sombrero implemented adjustments so that players swiftness of touches would be influenced by their ball control yes as well as their acceleration on the other hand players heights will have a lessened effect on their touches tall players with high ball control will now be able to take touches in a swift manner again man this sounds brilliant this sounds all exactly where i would want to see fixes come into implemented adjustments so the players control the ball with their backs against the opposition it becomes harder for the opposition to just take the ball away again that is very very good fix the issue where players may not control oncoming balls in an adequate fashion fix the issue where players may take a touch in a different direction that input it that's happened to me with so many times fix the issue where players may trap the ball forward even though command has not been performed as well as players may come to a full stop before trapping the ball even if a directional movement was inputted fix the issue man there's so much here this is going to be like a 40 minute video fix the issue where the player may unintentionally dash or overly accelerate or decelerate i should say when trapping fix the issue where the return, pa return pass from a pass and go is too difficult to control fix the issue where true balls may be played in a different direction they already said that fix the issue where true balls may become excessively weak so again there's a lot of stuff in here lads there's a lot of stuff in here increased accuracy for first time shot attempts from pacey passes fix the issue where one touch passes may be played to a different teammate than intended um so from here this page seems to focus on the player movement the inertia the speed the tricks and passing and first time shots so it seems to be all kind of like at the feet right so i'm interested to see what this update file is going to be page three so this is still continued okay defending we're going to get to defending right implemented adjustments so that players defensive awareness stats will also influence their speed of movement and acceleration in defensive situations on top of their acceleration stats defenders with high defending awareness will be able to accelerate in a quicker manner Oof, i like that whereas defender with low defending awareness will become slower in movement again that sounds really good if i've got a really high intelligent uh defensive player that has a really good high iq for defensive areas such as, such as benucci or shalini or somebody somebody like that that's not a rocket like do you know what i mean that's not a van der Merck or is not a is not an mbappe like i should be able to kind of read it and react to it very cleverly like they do in real life i mean there's a reason why shalini is one of the best defenders of all time and he probably wouldn't beat a tortoise in a run implemented adjustments so that players defensive awareness stats will also influence i read that fix the issue where players may attempt to block in an excessively forward position during matchup oh man if that's un if you can't abuse that anymore that would be music to my ears as well fix the ear issue where players cannot block horizontal passes even when in a position where a block could be performed again that's brilliant how many times have i gotten and blocked the passing lane he just doesn't have any awareness to the ball adjustments so that shoulder charges would be triggered towards a more appropriate position when standing diagonally adjustments for fair or foul decision on shoulder charges fix the issue where goalkeepers may not clear dangerous balls fix the issue where goalkeepers may unintendedly deflect the ball goalwards when performing a dive and save fix the issue where fouls may be called against goalkeeper who has made a physical contact with the opposition player when standing up after a save again i never really saw that 
fixed the issue regarding free kick defending where the selection order players in the wall may be inappropriate fix the issue where players may not apply man marking appropriately when defending from corner kicks further in gameplay enhancement fix the issue where the ball may bounce in an unnatural direction after colliding with a player for example in a block shot fix the issue where additional time may become excessively long and matches may end in inappropriate timings so last page lads went through that one a bit quicker but this one is a, there's a lot in this as well but it's more so non-gameplay stuff so general fixes apply to mitigate or eliminate the bugs shown below the application may crash due to an error when attempting to a direct shot on the receiving end of cross, the player may take a touch in his chest before shooting. You saw my last video where I had Patrick Vieira, and I was trying to do a first-time header, and he actually took a touch on his chest, right? He wanted to show off the wife was in the crowd, he wanted to be the big man on campus. Took a, took a really, like, weird show, uh, chest control touch, and then, like, I don't know what I had pressed. I must have had R2 pressed to, like, to kind of, like, sprint with the next player or whatever. And then he takes a power shot when he takes the touch. And I obviously conceded a goal out of it. Inputting a control shot command immediately after inputting a stunning shot command. In online matches, quick feints may not be triggered even if the kick feint command is inputted. Trajectory adjustments of goal kicks are not reflected. For goalkeepers to pick up the ball command may not be performed as intended. So again, there's loads of stuff here, lads. There's a load of stuff. When we start with a quick throw in the match, we may restart without the ball being displayed. Pa players' facial expressions may switch abruptly. They are fixing all of these stuff here. They're fixing all of this stuff, which is good. In certain stadiums, pillar-like graphics are displayed in the foreground. Uh, they've also added a load of different changes uh, to releasing a player, like to the you know the UI and the ease of access of actually making your team a little bit easier. Um, you can also add a load of stuff like to the game plan, and delete game plans, and name game plans. So, lads, we are going to go into it, right? We could make this a 40-minute video, but I think that page, the new update file available two out of four that page is where i'm really looking at the changes i want to see you know the stamina have a more of an impact i want to see better players the biggest problem i think with balancing it is that most players nowadays are playing with like 90 rated players so you're going to come up against all the players you're going to come up against are going to benefit from this because they'll all have really 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 high stats so that's the one thing i would have liked to see um is the stats kind of a little less crazy but then at the end of the day man if you bring out a pack if you bring out a pack, right, and there's 10 players in it and it costs you a thousand quid, some people will still buy it because they'll want to pay to win and get ahead. So with the GP players, you can you don't have to do that. But still, I would like to see the stats a little bit adjusted more so that the players are kind of a little there's more of a difference between a Messi and say somebody like Mbappe, like or not even Mbappe, but somebody like Jordan Sancho versus Mbappe. You know, there's differences in real life to those two players. Um, or Rashford and Mbappe. You know, there's different levels to them players. So in the game, you can kind of play Rashford very similar to Mbappe or comparing Son to Romario and stuff like that. So that is it for me, lads. I'll be back with a gameplay video. I know that's what you guys want to see. So hope you enjoyed this. This is more for just a big roundup before we get into the gameplay. But I will talk to you later, lads. Hope you're enjoying the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I will be back quite soon. Peace.